I think it's time I talk to you about berserkers. Berserker! Yes, berserkers. Berserker. Uh, because we've all been through that period of thinking that berserkers are just great, aren't they? I mean, is there anything that a 13 or 14 year old boy loves more, is more impressed by than a, a vicious, violent man with extremely low life expectancy? <laughs> and a big axe. No, you see, when you're that age, you just think it's a great idea. And so you read about berserkers and how they used to go berserk. Berserker. <laughs> and, you know, and the word, of course, berserk means to go into a frothing fury, doesn't it? And, and we know what they did, because they would, they would charge into the enemy and lay all about them and, and, and kill 20 other men before they would be hacked down by the enemy in a, in a great blaze of glory and blood. Brilliant. Um, and this is one of the reasons that I've delayed talking about berserkers because I fear that I may be about, you know, just, just brace yourselves now, I may be about to, to disappoint an awful lot of 13 and 14 year old boys and possibly an awful lot of the 13 and 14 year old boys that, that lingers still in, in perhaps older chaps and chapesses. Um, <clears throat> you see, uh, berserkers, yeah. The word berserker doesn't actually mean to fly into a fr Yes, I know the word berserk in modern English means to go etc. But in fact, um, the word berserker actually means bare shirt, uh, literally. Um, and it's interesting that in, in Old Norse, bear is like in English a little bit ambiguous between bear as in not wearing anything and bear as in the animal, you know, with the teeth and the claws, uh, a bare shirt. Um, now, berserkers are sometimes associated with the animals, bears, and the, the idea that they wore bear skins, the, the skins of bears, um, is reasonably historically sound. So, uh, that's something I can confirm. Berserkers and bear skins, if you, if you like that image of a guy wearing a bear skin, um, there you go. I can confirm that is a, a, probably an authentic image of a Viking berserker. Hello. I'm, in fact, a berserker. Bear skin. Oh, yes, the word berserker, of course, comes from the, the Norse and is associated with the Viking period, uh, but does get uh, attached to lots of other uh, things as well. For instance, I was watching an episode of uh, Time Commander on uh, television. It's one of those uh, shows where they get um, people to, to play uh, an ancient battle out. Uh, they, they choose, in, deliberately, they, they choose inept members of the public who know nothing about the ancient world. Um, and uh, get them to command armies on computer simula simulations. And on one of these, I saw an army that had massive units of Celtic berserkers armed with war picks. Yeah. Um, no, no, and no. Uh, no, the word berserker doesn't go with anything Celtic. It's a Norse word, and uh, we don't have any evidence that there were Celtic berserkers in the sense of the Viking berserkers. Uh, war picks? Units armed with war picks? Celts? Ancient Celts? Battling Romans? Really? No, I don't think so. And units of berserkers? Just think how daft that is. A unit of berserkers. So you've got, you've got loads and loads of guys who are completely off their heads and will just attack almost everything that's around them and you put them in big units? How's that going to work? Well, it didn't and it didn't happen. Okay, so large units of Celtic berserkers armed with warpick? No! Okay. Um, but later on, uh, there are, of course, uh, sagas and uh, historical accounts of uh, Vikings who would suddenly draw a sword and, and charge into the enemy and lay all about them. And you think, aha, there you go, you see, berserkers. Berserker! Unfortunately, the word berserker is never used to describe them. Um, now, when I was uh, contemplating making this video, I, I thought it would be nice to have a few examples to, to flesh things out. And uh, so I thought, um, whom could I consult? Well, I happen to know someone who took his thesis, his doctorate, in berserkers. Yes, I actually know from university, um, uh, Roderick Dale, his name is, uh, a, a doctor of berserkers, if you like. Okay, granted, it's not, he's not a professor of berserkers, but he's a doctor of berserkers. Come on, how specialist is that? So I consulted him and I asked him for some really, really specific examples and uh, he came up trumps. So um, uh, one example, for instance, uh, is um, now then, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to do any of the pronunciation, okay? Uh, but uh, this guy, uh, and uh, he's um, at this place, and uh, he he does this. Okay, that's that's what he does. Which, but fortunately, I have a translation here, and uh, it goes like this: 
For Rolf became so enraged that he slung his shield on his back and took his spear in both hands. Then he ran forward and laid all about him on both sides. Men all around him ran from him, but he killed many. Egil's Saga, chapter 53, if you want to look it up. Um, now, you see, there's, now there's another one, which is, which, which is like this, you see. And no, I'm not, I can't, I can't do the accent. Um, but again, here's the translation. Uh, King Harold Sigurdsson became so enraged that he ran forward all the way out of his battle line and laid about him on both sides. Neither helm nor mail coat could withstand him. And then all those who were nearest ran away. From Harald's Saga, chapter 92. Um, yeah, so it seems that these guys have possibly gone berserk. But the word berserk and berserker is not used to describe them. So what is the word berserker in all the old Norse stories used to describe? Well, a lot of lords would have someone called a berserker in their retinue, and he would often fight duels for them. Sometimes they're shown as bullies because uh, you could be bullied out of some, some land you own or whatever because they would deliberately provoke a, a legal dispute and then challenge someone to a duel and then, oh, my, my berserker will fight the duel for me. Oh, great. Okay, have the land. Uh, so that's uh, uh, one role that they play in uh, various sagas. Do you want to fight me? And uh, they're also some, some sort of religious element to them. They do you know, walk through fires and, and do, do that sort of thing. But uh, they're not necessarily pagan. Some of them were Christian. Can you have a berserker who's Christian? Hang on, that doesn't make sense really, isn't it? All about paganism and, and, and going to some sort of godly fury? Well, it seems not. Hello, I'm a berserker. Hmm? Uh, there's a very good illustration of what the word actual, what the actual word berserker might have meant back then, and it comes from a translation from the French. And I'm looking for the piece of paper. And here we go. Right. Okay. I'll probably regret throwing that piece of paper down. I'll have to bend down and pick it up in a moment. So uh, there is a translation of a French legend by uh, Chrétien de Troyes, Yvain le Chevalier au Lion, uh, Yvain the Knight of the Lion. Now, this was translated as Ivan's Saga in the 13th century for the Norwegian king, I can't do the accent, Hakon Hakonarsson. Okay, now, the point is that it has the word champion in it. And how does the Norwegian translate the word champion into Norse? He uses the word berserker. That makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Do you remember? In an important lord's retinue, he would have a berserker who would fight duels for him. The word berserker meant champion, and you would label your champion by giving him a bear skin. Oh, yeah. And the guys who went berserk in battle weren't berserkers. But wait, I hear some of you cry. Well, maybe not, but you know, in my mind. Surely there are tales, are there not, of men howling and biting the edges of their shields going berserk. That's right. It's the, 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 the berserker rage. It was before they, they would start the, the fight, they would go into this rage, wouldn't they, and howl and bite their shields and stuff. Didn't that happen? Isn't that mentioned in sagas? Well, yes, it is. <laughs> oh! Ha! Aha! And so many 13 and 14 year old boys around the world may be thinking, ah, oh, great. This, this idea I have is saved. Not exactly. Because if we examine those uh, literary examples where that behaviour is shown, it doesn't seem that these men are really berserk. Um, and I do have some examples for them. So, for example, um, in Gretis Saga, chapter 40, if you want to look it up, um, Snegkoller, okay, I can't do the pronunciation, begins biting his shield and howling, okay, before a fight. Things, he's actually mounted on a horse at this point, and the fight hasn't started yet. And uh, Gretir um, takes uh, advantage of this and runs up to him, kicks the bottom of the shield up into the guy's mouth, um, injuring him quite badly, drags him off to the horse and beheads him. Doesn't sound that that guy was really berserk. Uh, an idiot, perhaps, howling and biting his shield, yes, but that's not really what we think of as being berserk. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm terribly good at this. Now, I have another example. Um, in Egil's saga, chapter 64, um, the berserker Lyot the Pale, he also does the shield biting and the howling sort of thing. Aha! So he's going berserk, right? Well, yeah, but not exactly, because he does all the howling and all that sort of stuff. But he then 
talks to his opponent for a bit and then does a bit more getting ready and then the fight starts and they fight for a bit and then he says let's have a rest and they pull back and he has a bit more of a conversation and then the fight carries on. This guy is not berserk. So what is all this howling and shield biting stuff? Well, we don't know, but we can make various guesses. One being is it's a bit like the, the All Blacks doing a hacker before a rugby match. It's a sort of, it, you know, it's sort of psyching yourself up and, and trying to get into your own head. Okay, I can do this, I can do this, and perhaps intimidating your opponent. Ah. Oh, what about the magic mushrooms? Did, is it true that berserkers took magic mushrooms? No. Well, there's no evidence for it. Sorry, there just isn't. So, um, berserkers didn't go berserk. Uh, some people who did hack about them weren't actually berserkers. Um, fighting naked and so forth, there's no evidence that... Oh, well, <laughs> sorry, well, actually, no, no, not sorry. I'm glad, I'm good. Hooray, there is no evidence that berserkers fought naked. So, they probably wore bear skins. That's an actual thing. Um, but the rest... But, but, uh, berserker? Berserk. I'm sorry, I, I, it's, just, it's just disappointment, isn't it? Or is it? Should we, now that we've got over being 13 and 14, not rejoice that actually berserkers were not that sort of image? Uh, should we not rejoice and think to ourselves, no, actually, it's better that they weren't these one-dimensional psychos. They were actually potentially more interesting characters. Well, hooray! So, maybe I've, I've made berserkers more interesting for you rather than less. I do hope that's the case. Berserker! But hasn't the idea of the Berserker been around for a long time? Does that not give it some sort of currency? Oh yes, oh yes, the idea of the Berserker, as in the guy who flies into a fury and so forth, Vikings! Vikings! on his helmet and, and all the rest of it, yes, that goes way, way back, way back, way back to the early 19th century. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>